I am Kimberly with Hug Longer Digital Designs and I don't know if you're part of my Facebook group Hug Longer Digital Design um, help but if you are you may know that I posted a question the other day asking what kind of tutorials you would like to have on YouTube and Allison suggested having one on how to make snap taps with a name on them so today we're going to cover how to make those with Stitch Artist level 3 and then also we'll learn how to make those with stitch artist level I believe just 2 and enthusiast and then finally we're going to learn how to add a grommet instead of a snap tab as well in case you like that option. Thanks for joining me today and let's get started. What we're going to do first is we're going to hit on our little choose a lettering design and when we click on that we can choose many different fonts, whatever fonts that you have in your font savings. Um, I have quite a few. Here is the one I'm going to use. This is the one I designed. It's the Hobo font. Uh, actually, Embrilliance has their own version of the Hobo font as well. Um, that is available at Embrilliance. And I am going to put my dog Duro's name in there. D-U-R-O. It means hard in Espanol and he had a hard start to his little life. And let's make that just a little bigger. Let's see, how about we make that about two and a quarter inches by just almost an inch high. And there you have a little better look at that. Now, we're assuming here that we do not have enthusiasts. This we're doing with just Stitch Artist Level 3. I am going to show you how to do it with enthusiasts as well, but let's start this way. So what I do if I don't have enthusiasts, and there's other ways to do this, is I go into the true type font and I find a font that's the same or similar to what I'm using. And here is the Hobo standard font, which is the same as I'm using. I would go in here and I would spell out Duro, hit enter, and then I would size it down to match up pretty much with what I have here as the font. Once I do that, now I'm going to go up to the path areas and find inflate objects. I'm going to click on inflate objects and this little screen is going to pop up. I do want to remove the hole. Look what happens to this hole and this hole when I hit that button. Remove holes. It gets rid of the holes in the letters or the object that you're inflating. And then I'm going to bring that up to about a 3.5. That looks pretty good. I'm going to have some extra dots here to get rid of the extra nodes. So I'm going to make it a little larger. I don't need a 4.4 though, now do I? Let's go down. Let's see what 4 looks like. 4 is pretty good. So I'm going to hit OK. Now you can see all these inflated letters are overlapping each other and that's what I wanted because now what I want to do is I want to go up and back into the path area and click on the union button. And when I do that it's going to form a union of these four outlines. I will no longer need these four outlines so I'm going to get rid of those. Now I don't think I want the Oh, just up like that so I can go in here and play with these nodes and make them a little different however I want. I can also go up to create outline and do a reconstruction to see if I can get some nodes away from there because it's a lot of nodes. There's still a lot of nodes. I would probably get rid of a few more. Um, just play with it a little bit. And then I want to add a single running stitch to that. Now you can see it's starting and stopping here. I don't want that because I want it to start and stop over here where I'm going to add a tab. Okay, there we have it. And one thing I do that um, is a really good idea to do is I have a file of templates that I've made, things that I use over and over again. One of those things is a tab for fobs. 
And so I'm going to go open. It's going to go to my templates file. And I have scrolls and other things, zipper, zipper placements, lots of different templates. I'm going to click on the fob tab one, and I'm going to open that. And I have two different fob tabs, one with a rounded edge and one with a more squared off edge. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to choose the rounded one, and I'm also going to grab the two snap placements. And I'm going to Command C. You would Control C if you have a PC. I have a Mac. And I'm going to Command V. Again, you would Control if you have a PC. Now I'm going to line these up right over here. Let's see where I put this. Oh, I did pretty good with that, didn't I? So now what we have is we have the name and we have a single run stitch of the um, outline of the lettering and then we have a single um, of the single run stitch on the tab and then we also have these little snap placements. Now what slowed me down on my speech here is I noticed this is at a 3 and the other one's at a 2.5 so we're going to make these the same. You know what, we might just bring those both to a 3 because I like the 3 look better on the other ones. Okay, so now what I want to do is make the second one the same color as the first one. So let me go into the color and click on it and then I'm going to go to my palettes here and I see that the outline is gray so I'm going to click on the gray and hit OK. So now these are both because it's the gray color. Okay. Now this is for the placement. It's where you would stitch on the tearaway stabilizer. Now since it doesn't need to be um, secured, I don't usually add the ties on this one. It's going to be on the stabilizer so it's not that important. Um, but now I'm going to highlight both of them here in the properties field. And I'm going to hit Command C, Command V, Command V. And if you have a PC, that will be Control C, Control V, Control V. And I have two more copies now. So I do not want them to be all the same color. And I do not want them to have all the same stitches. What I want for this second set here is I want this set to be directly under the, net, the first set. And on this one here, I want tie at the entry. So it's going to tie when it starts stitching. It's going to go all the way around. It's not going to tie because it's going to continue here. And I do want to tie at the exit. Does that make sense? I don't need to tie here around the name if I'm starting again right there. It's better just to not have it tie off and cut and then restart. Let's just make it one smooth motion. Okay. I also want this run to be a double stitch. It's going to tack down that top material. And by doing that, it's going to hold it in place before we put the name on it. Then the color, let's just go choose another color. It doesn't really matter. I keep the thread, same thread in there because um, why not? Why change those? Perfect. So now we have the placement stitch, then we have the tack down of the first layer of vinyl. After that, that's where I'm going to want the name. So I can put the name right in between there. And then we're going to want to add the piece of vinyl to the back of the hoop. Now I'm going to bring this up here. Bring this one down too. Once we add that fabric or that vinyl to the back of the hoop, you may want to secure that with a piece of tape at the edge, but then we're going to need to tack those both together. And I like to do that with a really strong stitch. I like the Chihiko stitch. I think it looks nice and gives good solid um, stitch together. Again, I want to make sure that I have the tie at the entry and then on here the tie at the exit. And we're going to make this yet another color. 
So let's make this, let's make it green. All right. So now there we have that. And these two right here are just a single stitch. It's placement for the stamps. <coughs> That's my husband in the background. Um, and so that we know exactly where to put our snaps. Now, I think you may notice here that this is like a separated one, two, and three. The reason is, is because the Duro name is um, not formulated to switch over to convert to objects. If it was, set up that way, then you would be able to just merge this entire design and make it one. Not to worry, it will still stitch out fine. Um, you will need to convert each one individually um, for your formats, which typically speaking, if you're making a name fob, you're only making one in one format, so that is totally fine. And there you have the uh, fob made with Jess Stitch Artist, level three. Let's take a peek as it runs. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. Outline, tap down, name. And then finally, we're gonna have the front and the back stitched together. Then replacements for the snaps. And that is how you would do that, or at least how I do that, in stitching.